What's going on guys? Dave here again. TMG in the garage and I need to do front brakes, at least front brakes, on the 2012 Mini Cooper Countryman S. Um, I thought they were getting a little bit low when I got the new wheels put on. I kind of peeked at them while the tire store was putting the wheels on them. But yesterday, um, actually for like the last week, I've been getting a little notification stating that the front brakes were becoming due. So they had like a little countdown of mileage, you know, 200 miles, 300 miles, whatever it said. And I tried to clear it and it would not clear. So I was wondering if I had to wait till it got a little closer or if that just meant that the pad sensor was actually starting to touch. And yesterday while driving, I hit the brakes and instantly the red brake light comes on which tells me that the pad sensor is finally ground out. So when the pad sensor, and I'll show you when we get the wheels apart, but the pad sensor actually touches the rotor when the, th the pad gets thin enough, and that actually causes the sensor to ground out, um, and that throws the code on the uh, instrument cluster. So I have, spin this around real quick, I have our aftermarket wheels on now. So give me a moment, I'm gonna lift the front end up, I'll get the wheels off of it, and then we will uh, talk about the brake pad indicator system, as well as what it looks like it needs for brakes. All right, wheels are off. This is the driver's side of the vehicle. This is the side that has the pad sensor wire. So I'm gonna do the brakes on this side of the vehicle. Everything will be the same on the other side, except for the fact that there is no pad sensor wire there's only one pad sensor per vehicle or i should say for the front usually there's one for the rear but there's only one on the front so what we're going to need for this job today uh, you need a phillips and flathead screwdriver and i've already prepped this area to reach back here and grab this wire you gotta be able to get your hand back here it's just easier if you take these out so you unthread it with the Phillips, pop it out either by hand or with the regular screwdriver. One there, one there. Just gives you a little more room to get in here. Okay, and then to take the caliper off, we're gonna have a 13 millimeter bolt on the bracket, and we're gonna have a 16 millimeter bolt back here that you really can't see for the bracket itself. So the caliper where it attaches at the bracket is a 13. The bracket where it attaches at the spindle is a 16. Once that's completed, we will have to take off this bolt to get the rotor off. I've pre-treated it. Um, and this, you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen. Unfortunately, I broke mine and I had this sitting in its place, probably to remind me that I needed one. So we're gonna use this and I'll show you how I'll break it free with that. Uh, as far as penetrating oil goes, guys, the best thing that I have ever found is right here, and I'll show you. I get this at Napa. It is called Fluid Film. So this breaks everything free. I've pulled carriage bolts off with that that nothing else has been able to touch. So that's just my opinion. You can use what you want. WD-40 usually doesn't touch things. PB Blaster anymore doesn't really work that stuff works great so I'm gonna set the camera down and I'm gonna get to work here all right so as you can see this is how I'm doing it so I took my screwdriver, I stuck it in between the veins, pinned it up against the caliper. That way it stops the rotor from moving. And then I just take another wrench as an extension and take it off. Now, if you had a, a socket that you could use your impact on, this would buzz right off. And you wouldn't even need to block off the rotor because it would impact fast enough that the rotor went spin. But of course, like I said, I must have broke mine. So I have to do it this way. 
but pre-treating helped this loosen up significantly. Here's the bolt right here. I got black gloves on, so it's probably hard to see. Set this aside. You do not have to replace it unless you strip it out or ruin it. Then you will. All right, so with that done, now we're going to pull the caliper off. the sensor wire through there. Now we'll remove these pads and as you can see they actually have life left on them but I will show you here. So as you can see right there that's the pad sensor and it's been ground down. That's what turns on the brake pad light. So even though there's a little bit of life left, that's why the brake pad light came on and that's why we're replacing it. Now these pad sensors are not reusable. Once they're worn down and they rub, that sensor is now bad. So when you replace the pads, you replace the sensor also. All right, now we're gonna take off the bracket. No reason to work hard, work smart, use a hammer, it'll loosen it up for you, no problem. And then off comes the rotor. And that's it. Alright, so before we start installing the pads onto our uh, brackets here, I want to not only make sure these are free, but I'm actually going to pull them, I'm going to clean them, I'm going to lubricate them. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the hardware off because these pads come with new hardware. And where the hardware sits, I'm actually going to clean those up, and I like to use my Dremel, so I turn on like mid-speed, and I get in here, and I just clean these up, get all the rust off of them, or the majority of it. Alright, so those are clean, so I cleaned... The mating surfaces here where the hardware is going to sit also on top on both sides inner and outer channels on both sides so 
So I'm going to wipe that off real quick. Now we're going to work on the pins. So we're going to take these pins out. I'm going to clean the old grease off of the pins. They're nice and shiny. They look good. No rust build up. So that's a plus. Same on this one. Clean it up. Nice and clean, no problems. So I like to use Silk Glide. I know this is the old school mechanic way. You know, we've been using this stuff for about 50 years. And uh, it does great. I hate the or the uh, ceramic stuff because I feel like it's dirty. It leaves deposits. It's a little more oily. And I think this stuff is the best. So we put a little bit on there, coat it, and then I'm gonna do that to the other one. So I'll just squeeze a little bit out on here. That's all you need. Coat it. Make sure you get up on the knurl here where the boot's gonna sit. And then I also, and this is, this is what I do, very small, very small. You don't wanna pack this full because then it won't be free. But you wanna put some fresh silicone in there. And then you're gonna take your pin and I always twist it when it goes in so it lubricates everything. Make sure it's working. Make sure the boot is fully seated. Do that with the other side. It's good to go there. Okay, now we're gonna put our new hardware on. So, close this up. Don't want it to dry out. Today I'm gonna use the Adaptive One Euro Pads from Napa. I was gonna use the Akibonos. But, I actually wanted to try these out. Uh, we've used the adaptive ones on like GMs and stuff and I wasn't a big fan of them. Um, I don't understand this whole stupid inboard outboard technology crap. So on these, the red dot, let me verify before I tell you. I believe the red dot is the inboard pad. Matter of fact, I might even say, yeah, inner. So the ones with the red dot will go on the inside so piston side, the blue dot goes on the outer, so wheel side. Now inside the box they come with hardware. It also comes with, oh, where's that, right here. <sighs> Ceramic, ceramic brake grease. <clears throat> so they're saying you should put it on, you know, your hardware and all that. I hate this ceramic stuff. I really do. If you guys want to use it, go right ahead. I'm not going to use it. So, first things first, we're going to get out our hardware. I just dump it all out. Don't need no instructions. That's what I'm here for. And these are the same. <clears throat> so, these are going to get snapped in. This lip is always facing out. Okay, guys? Always facing out. Up or down. So, I'm going to snap them in. I snap my hardware into a dry caliper. Okay? I do not lubricate the caliper first. Again, these little tabs right here, these actually go right up against the caliper. So that's how you can guide yourself and make sure they're in properly okay like that and then this is where I use my sill glide again and again just just a dab and I grease up here right where the pad is going to slide that's all I do just a little bit like that nothing crazy guys Nothing at all. Okay, we're gonna throw those back in there. Put the lid back on that. Wipe our hand up. So when we're looking at this bracket, the inside is gonna be where these bolts are. So the inboard pad will go here. The outboard pad will go here. 
and the wear sensor goes on the inboard pad. So outboard pad. Okay, like that. I actually like the way that went together. This is your inboard pad. This is where your sensor is going to go. So we're going to open up our sensor. Here's our sensor. There's the connector. So this sensor does go a certain way. That little titty right there. So this side doesn't have it. That side does. That side goes towards the rotor. So, when you're looking at your pad here, this goes down and snaps tight into your pad like that. Okay, so what happens is when you wear your brakes down, the rotor grinds off that little titty right there, turns on your brake light. So again, we're going to put this one in here. Man, I really like the way those fit. I like them. I'll be honest with you. So far, I like them. I like to drive on them, see what I think. But fitment-wise, I usually complain about Napa pads uh, and their hardware. I think they're not the best when it comes to fitment to install them. But I love their pads. I think they're pretty good with noise. I also think they're pretty good with clean, being clean. So so far, I like that. Let's go ahead and get it back over to the car. We'll pull all this back together. So I just wiped off my, my hub a bit. Uh, you can clean the edge up a little bit if you want. I marked it a couple times to see how deep the rust is. It's superficial, so it's not going to cause an issue with either mounting or with vibration. So we're going to go ahead and move forward and mount this. All right, so this is where the screw goes, right there. So we want that to be here. So it goes like that. And then we get our screw, uh, which I put down right here. Okay, here's the screw. Grab my Allen key. This does not need to be like cranked on super tight, guys. Another thing you can do if you want, you can take one of your wheel bolts, put one there, put one across from it, just so you know your rotor is lined up properly. And then I just want to snug it up. Again, good reason why I'm doing this by hand. And you just make sure all these thread in properly. They all should. Yep, okay. We're good. Now we're going to install the brakes. Before we do, we need to push the caliper back, the piston on the caliper. So right here. So my boot is in good shape, but the lip is popped out a little bit. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it when I push it back in. As long as there's no tears, we'll be good to go. The tears on the way in, then we have an issue. So in order to push it back, I use a pad spreader. So what I do is I take an old brake pad. See if I can move this up a little bit. I put it in my caliper and then I take my pad spreader and the idea here guys is slow. A lot of people crank these things out as quick as they can. That's where you cause issues. I don't bleed. Take the uh, brake bleeder loose. 
that's unnecessary. Matter of fact, if you do that, you're going to need to bleed your, bleed your brakes. So that's not necessary. Just take your time. If the caliper and the hose are in good shape, the piston will go back without any problem. You see, I don't need to put like a vice grip on here or anything. This is what should happen with the bleeder still tight. Should be able to just slowly push this all the way in. And we're gonna push it in until it stops like that. Back it back off, take out the old pad. And you see it's in, and you see my boot has seated all the way back in the way it's supposed to. That is how you do this. You do not ever need to crack the bleeder. If you need to crack the bleeder, you either have a hose that's collapsed, or you have so much corrosion back here in this piston that this caliper needs to be replaced. That's just the truth of it. You should be doing maintenance on your brake fluid anyways, roughly every 30,000 miles. So that's the only time you need to bleed the brakes and actually clean, or I should say, exchange the brake fluid. If your brake fluid is ever low inside of the hood where the master cylinder is, if you fill it up, you're going to lose fluid when you do this because it's going to push that extra fluid out. The reason your fluid goes low, only two reasons. One, because the fluid is filling up this cavity here, and that means your pads are getting low, or you have a leak. Otherwise, if it's full, when you start the car, it should always remain full. As it goes down, that's because your pads are getting lower and your piston is being pulled out further, which means this pocket here is holding more fluid. The moment you push this in, the fluid goes back through the hose, back into the master, and actually fills back up. So the only time fluid should be removed is when doing a brake fluid service. You should never have to top off your fluid ever unless you're doing a brake fluid service. That's just the truth, guys. All right, so we're gonna put this all back now. So I'm gonna start by putting my bracket on. So we're gonna take our larger 16 millimeters. Now we're gonna mount our caliper, and then we have the wire. So this has to be fed through the center of this caliper first. So. Grab this and move it. Now we're gonna take our pad wire here Move you back over here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So it comes through. Actually, the first thing it's going to do is go around the boot here that seals the bleeder. That's where they use the first spot. So you just snap that on there. And then we're going to come up here and it's going to So, uh, this one's a little bit different than the factory one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook it up first, and then I'll feed it into place. Okay, right, now we're going to feed these two push clips back into that area. All right, besides putting the wheel back on, this side is completed. The reason I have this open, your fog light is in there, and my fog light has condensation on it. So I'm actually going to go, go and grab a dryer, a hair dryer, and I'm going to try and dry it out. I'm going to pull the bulbs out of there, and I'm going to try and dry it out while I'm working on the car. So that's going to be it, guys. Same thing on the other side, except there's no pad sensor. Any questions, leave them down below. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, you know, this is pretty similar with most vehicles. Um, you may not have the screw that holds a rotor on, or it may be a different screw. 
uh, the size of the bolts might be a little different, but it's the same technique. Clean everything, lubricate everything well, put it back together, hand tight. I mean, as tight as you can get it, you know, ratchet or whatever is fine. If you got like a little impact like I do, you can use that as well. You don't necessarily have to torque everything. The idea is it has to be tight. Uh, so I'm going to finish this job up, do the other side, get the wheels back on and go from there. All right, you guys. One last thing, and I want to mention something. Your brake rotors, when you buy those, make sure you get a can of brake clean. You're going to want to clean the surface off. Just spray it clean. Uh, I know some places say you don't have to. Some places also say that they've got like a break-in coating. It's all bullshit. It's an oil that's put on the rotor. That way they don't rust while they're sitting in the box waiting to be sold to you. I've actually seen brakes start on fire because that oil was not removed and it was on a larger vehicle and it caused so much heat that that oil ignited. So take a little brake clean, just spray the face of the rotor off both the front and the back side before you mount it. Now, brake light is still on. How we're going to reset this. So car's running, it's in park. You can do the car off, I have the car running. So we're gonna hold this button down. And there it is. We're gonna come over here, use this button, the BC button, and we're gonna hold it down. Reset, let go, hold it again. And let go, and there it goes, 37,000 miles, the light is off. That's all you have to do. You can shut the vehicle off, you can start it back up, we'll shut it off. I'll pull the key out, I'll put the key back in, put on the brake, and everything is now clear, and we're good to go. Ta-da! Make sure before you take off, you pump the brake a couple times, get that brake pedal back, and then you take it for a test drive. Appreciate it, guys. Make sure you like the video if you've watched it. Make sure you subscribe. If you see anybody that has questions about how to do brakes on these vehicles, just give them the link to my video. I'd appreciate it. You guys take care. We'll see you on the next one.